أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأفضل الصلاة والتسليم على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم وقوله الحق Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Holy Quran and what he says is the truth in the chapter of Al-Anbiya, chapter 21, verse 73. وَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ أَئِمَّةً Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this blessed verse, he says, and we made them leaders, imams, by our command. And we revealed unto them, now for the purpose of guiding people of course, and we revealed unto them how to do good deeds, how to pray, and how to give charity. And to us, they were worshippers. Sadaq Allah al Azim, Amanna Billah. Brothers and sisters, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. And welcome to another episode in this series on theology. Now, uh, last episode we left off speaking about the Hadith of Thaqalain and how it's mentioned in Sahih Muslim. Um, how the Prophet وسلم, emphasized three times. Now in the Arabic language, there are uh, tools of emphasis, like for example, inna is a tool of emphasis. Or for example, la, the lam of tawqeed, is a tool of emphasis. Or at the end of a word, where you have something called noon at tawqeed, la'adhabanna, for example, or la'adhaban. Another tool of tawqeed, of emphasis, is to repeat something. So, for example, if I say to you, as-salah, as-salah, I'm emphasizing the importance of prayer. Um, notice, for example, in the adhan, we repeat twice to emphasize, right? Or four times in the adhan, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. So, this is a tool in the Arabic language for emphasis. So, um, we notice that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in that very hadith 6378 within Sahih Muslim he says So the Prophet here what is he doing? He's saying look I remind you to hold steadfastly to my Ahlul Bayt. Remember he said that he's leaving two weighty things the book of Allah in it is guidance and knowledge and Ahl al Bayt. The question is then, who are Ahl al Bayt? So, an argument is posed, of course, as we know, that are the women of the Prophet of his Ahl al Bayt? In Sahih Muslim, in Hadith 6381 6, specifically, um, the Hadith mentioned that the uh, narrator is asked. And are his wives of his Ahl al Bayt? So he answers back, he says, La wa aim Allah. He says, No, I swear by Allah that his women or that women are not, his women are not of his Ahl al Bayt. For we know that a woman can be married to a man for a specific period and then she might be divorced. And then when she's divorced, she goes back to her father and her tribe. However, those who are considered his Ahl al-Bayt, he says, Asbatuhu, meaning that they're the ones that are from his bloodline, his lineage. And what else? And he says that they are the ones, specifically they are the ones whom Allah forbid them to receive sadaqah. They are the ones alladheena haram Allahu alayhim as-sadaqah. So it makes it very clear that none of the wives of the Prophet are from his Ahl al-Bayt. The Ahl al-Bayt are specifically those that are from his lineage. Who of his lineage? We go to the chapter of Al-Ahzab, chapter 33, verse 33, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمْ الرِّدْسَ أَلَى الْبَيْتِ وَيُطَهِرَكُمْ تَطْهِيرًا This verse states, Allah, surely Allah wants nothing other than to purify you, O Ahl al-Bayt, to keep from you all corruption, and to purify you the best of purifications. This is a very important 
verse. Why? Because it was specifically revealed about Ahlul Bayt. It is by consensus that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, went to the house of Lady Fatima السلام, This incident actually recurs in the houses of his wives as well as in the houses of as well as in the home of Lady Fatima السلام, It occurred in the um, house of Hafsa and occurred in the house of Aisha um, so, and Umm Salama also. So what we find is that this hadith specifically is narrated by Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari, the great companion of the Prophet, the trustworthy companion of the Prophet وسلم, Both schools of thought take from his hadiths. So the hadith from Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari is known as Hadith al-Kisa, the hadith of the cloak, where the Prophet وسلم, comes to the house of Lady Fatima or the house of one of his wives and he sees Lady Fatima there and he calls uh, uh, Imam al-Hasan salamullah alayhi comes in first he says I smell the fragrance of my grandfather Lady Fatima says to him he is under the cloak why? because he comes in sick and he's or feeling weak and he asks Sayyidah Fatima to bring him al-kisa uh, um, al-yamani which is basically uh, a cloak that is made in Yemen so she brings it to him, she covers him then Imam al-Hasan comes he smells his fragrance, he asks his mother um, I smell the fragrance of my grandfather, she says to him he's under the cloak, he goes and asks him if he can join him under the cloak. Imam al-Hasan comes an hour later, then Imam, al uh, Imam Ali, alayhi, then Lady Fatima alayhi salam, and they all go under the cloak by permission of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Then Allah commands Jibra'il alayhi salam to descend upon them, to deliver the message of the revelation of the verse of uh, at tathir the purification, which is in uh, chapter 33, verse 33, Al-Ahzab, the verse we just mentioned. And um, the Prophet goes on to say that, uh, uh, describing who is under the cloak. He says that they are of me, may Allah love who loves them, may Allah hate who hates them, um, their flesh is my flesh, their blood is my blood, and so forth. And then the benefits of reciting of that cloak are mentioned um, at the end of the hadith where uh, a conversation goes on between Prophet Muhammad and Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi, and he tells him that there isn't a venue in which this hadith is mentioned except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, sends to them or descends upon them the angels so that they can ask for repentance for them until they leave that majlis or that gathering. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. May Allah make us of those who are always in gatherings in which there is the mentioning of Ahl al-Bayt and the hadith of Al-Kisa. So who were the, these people then that were under the cloak? Lady Fatima, Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein, as well as Imam Ali, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhim jami'an. Then what do we have? We also have another um, uh, event that occurred called the event of Al-Mubahala where Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam literally has this dialogue and a challenge is posed within the dialogue that he has with the Christians of Najran. And they um, agree that they are to go back, each one of them is to supposed to bring the most important people to them and the best proof upon the other um, that what their claim is, is correct. So whoever has a correct claim will win and the mubahala basically is that the loser, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make them sterile and therefore they will not be able to have more progeny so that they can propagate the false information that they um, are claiming. Prophet Muhammad والسلام, he goes out, he comes back to them on the day of the challenge, he brings with him who? He says, abna'ana um, wa abna'akum, nisa'ana wa nisa'akum, and he says, Anfusana wa anfusakum. So what does he do in, in uh, uh, the challenge is, he says, say, you bring your, uh, we'll bring our kids and you bring your kids. We'll bring our uh, women, you bring your women, we'll bring ourselves and, your, and you bring yourselves uh, so that we may nabtahil, so that we may um, pose this challenge. Uh, and then, uh, the uh, damnation or the lana of Allah will be on those who lie, uh, the, uh, the verse states. Now, what happens here? Prophet Muhammad essentially 
What is he doing essentially? He's bringing his Ahlul Bayt and using them as a proof upon this group of Christians. Now, it's narrated that on that day when Prophet Muhammad brought Imam al Hassan wal Hussein, Abna'ana wa Abna'akum, brought his daughter, Lady Fatima, Nisa'ana wa Nisa'akum, and brought Imam Ali, Salamullahi alayhi, Anfusana wa Anfusakum, and he posed that challenge that when the Christians of Najran, the high priest, saw um, uh, who, had, who he had brought, that they um, conceded and they retreated. When asked, um, the high priest said, Surely I saw a people who were with him that if he brought them to the mountains, they would shake asunder. So, what is he saying here? He's saying a couple of things. One, that these Ahlul Bayt are of great status. Two, that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he brought with him um, intercessors. So Prophet Muhammad brought with him his Ahlul Bayt to intercede for him and to prove his claim of prophethood. Now that's something to really contemplate and think about. The next thing that's important to mention is a great hadith because you might say, well, okay, that's his Ahlul Bayt during his time. Well, no, that's not just it. In the chapter of Ma'idah, chapter 5, verse 55, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically mentions, إِنَّمَا وَلِيُّكُمُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةُ وَيُؤْتُونَ زَكَاتَهُمْ رَاكِعُونَ We mentioned this verse, if you recall, where Allah says, surely no other than Allah, His Messenger, and those who believe, those who pray and give alms while they are in the state of record. We said by consensus, both schools of thought believe and agree that this verse was revealed about Ali ibn Abi Talib However, our scholars, they go one step further. They say because it states those who believe in the plural, that this includes every single Imam after Amir al-Mu'mineen Sallallahu Alaihi that this includes Imam al Hassan alayhi salam, that he went through a similar event, Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, that he went through a similar event, and the rest of the Imams. Now, the question is who are the rest of the Imams? Were they mentioned by name? Well, according to Jabir ibn Abdullah al Ansari, in a book called Kamal al Din wa Tamam al Ni'mah by Sheikh al Saduq. Now, remember, um, Jabir ibn Abdullah al Ansari is the honorable companion of the Prophet وسلم, who both schools of thought take. Also, he is the narrator of the hadith of Al-Kisa, which both schools of thought also take. So what does he say? It says, this is in uh, uh, volume 1, uh, page 258 in the version that I have, which is from Mu'assas al-Nashr al-Islami al-Tabi'ah li-Jama'at al-Mudarraseen fi Hawzat Qum al muqaddasa so it states, it says, فَقَامَ جَابِرْ فَقَامَ جَابِرْ بْنُ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ الْأَنصَارِ So Jabir gets up. فَقَال Speaking to the Prophet, he says, يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَمَنِ الْأَئِمَّةُ مِنْ وُلْدِ عَلِيِّ بْنِ أَبِي طَالِبْ And who are the Imams from the sons of Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam? قَال الْحَسَنُ وَالْحُسَيْنِ سَيِّدَا شَبَابِ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ He says, Imam al-Hasan and al-Husayn the masters of the youth of heaven. Then he says, ثُمَّ سَيِّدُ الْعَابِدِينَ فِي زَمَانِهِ عَلِي يُبْنُ الْحُسَيْنِ He says, and then Imam Zayn al-Abidin. Notice he mentions his kunya, um, he mentions uh, his, uh, his agnumen, his nickname, as well as his full name. Then he says, ثُمَّ الْبَاقِرُ مُحَمَّدُ بْنُ عَلِيًّ He says, then Imam al-Baqir, Muhammad, the son of Ali ibn al-Husayn, alayhim afdal as-salatu was salam. He says, وَسَتُدْرِكُهُ يَا Jabir. He says, and you will see him, O Jabir. He says, فَإِذَا أَدْرَكْتَهُ He says, and when you see him, فَأَقْرِئْهُ مِنِّي السَّلَامِ Then, I, I sent to him my, um, my uh, greetings. Deliver them to him. He then says, ثُمَّ الصَّادِقِ Ja'far ibn Muhammad. He then says, Thumma al-Kadhim, Musa ibn Ja'far. He says then, Thumma al-Ridha, 
علي بن موسى ثم التقي محمد بن علي ثم النقي علي بن محمد ثم الزكي الحسن بن علي ثم ابنه القائم بالحق المهدي then his son القائم the one that spreads the truth المهدي مهدي أمتي الذي يملأ الأرض قسطا وعدلا كما ملئت جورا وظلما the one who makes truth and equity reign just as oppression and tyranny and dictatorship reigned. هؤلاء يا جابر خلفائي These are my caliphs وأوصيائي and my executors وأولادي and my sons وعترتي and my عترة my progeny من أطاعهم فقد أطاعني He who obeys them has obeyed me ومن عصاهم فقد عصاني He who disobeys them has disobeyed me ومن أنكرهم أو أنكر واحدا منهم فقد أنكرني and he who denies them even if it's one of them has denied me بهم يمسك الله عز وجل السماء أن تقع على الأرض إلا بإذنه Allah holds this earth together through them they are the intercessors وبهم يحفظ الله الأرض أن تميد بأهلها and it is through them that Allah keeps this earth secure and its people secure I ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to take this information, absorb it well, understand that these Imams are our saviors and our salvation on this earth, and that truly they must be the best representatives, especially since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, Allah wa ati'u rasula wa ulil amri minkum as we mentioned. These are ulil amr. Obey Allah, obey His Messenger, and those of the command, and we just proved through this uh, hadith that they are those of the command mentioned one by one and obeying them is tantamount to being obedient to the Prophet which means we are obedient to Allah. وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيت الطيبين الطاهرين.